Let me state first, for the record, so that way it's clear to everyone, I am very happy and very thankful that we have a second legitimate major wrestling brand in America that's featured two hours on primetime cable television every week. I'm thankful for that. I look forward to Wednesday nights with the hope that AEW and AEW Dynamite will give me some good stuff. It will give me some reminders of why I've been a wrestling fan all these years, why I am a wrestling fan now, why I want to continue to be a wrestling fan and talk about it on the interwebs and etc. But God damn it! Some weeks they make it so incredibly easy to crap all over what they do. And this was one of those weeks. Like, look, the John Moxley versus Yuji Nagata match. Like, I could sit there and say, why are you wasting your time with Nagata opening your fucking show? I could say, you know what, maybe you think of him as a legend, but this is a guy that wrestled here really stateside 20 plus years ago. Um, are you trying to grow your audience or are you just trying to appeal to the audience that you already have? I want to be clear and totally emphasize this point. If you are not trying to grow, if you are not trying to increase the scale of your business, you are stupid. You're doing business wrong. You are dying. Because for small businesses, big businesses does not matter. Why would you potentially limit or cap your revenue earning potential, your earnings potential, your potential profit margins? Why would you do that? And I look at this type of match as a representation of the problems with this company of you're on primetime national cable television. You shouldn't just be appealing to the fans you already got. You should be also trying to branch out and bring in new fans. And this is not the type of match that does this. Now the match fundamentally itself doesn't piss me off because at least I look at it and I see two serious competitors that go out there and have a serious style match. The right guy wins. I'm cool with that. Like it's not the match itself that bothers me. It's just like that the thought concept of that you feel like it was so important to have Nagata on here when there was no fucking reason to do it. It would irritate me more, but at least it felt like the commentators during the match were at least trying to tell the story of why this is significant, why, who this guy was. But then I also think about the fact of you're defending another company's title on your damn show. Like, it's just mind-blowing to me. Like, who does that benefit? It doesn't benefit anybody. It really doesn't. It's just dumb. But I can live with that type of dumb sometimes. What I can't live with, though, and more and more, thank the Lord, people are starting to seem to fall in line with this, is Cody Rhodes getting his fucking camera time every week. He's just got to make sure he fucking does it, doesn't he? And whoa, boy, did he stink up the joint this week. This promo was an absolute piece of the drizzling shits. He's sitting there trying to make this veiled-ass, lame-ass political speech that made him look like a moron. He's using his black wife and his unborn mixed baby as a prop to try and get a cheap pop. All the while, he's sitting there talking about a go-go and talking about this America versus them type of shit. It ain't the 1770s, you asshole! He's sitting there saying the Department of Transportation handles visas. That's what in the fuck is that a thing? And since when in the hell is America the only comp country that has goddamn freedoms, you moron? And then furthermore, to talk about this, like, you bring in the wife and the kid as some dumb prop, which of course Brandy, her dumbass, likes being a fucking prop. I'm proud to be the first black woman in the Rhodes family. Uh, you fucking would be, you dumb bitch. And he's talking like a go-go himself as a fucking biracial, like, who the fuck? That's this promo beforehand. Who the hell tells Cody to sit there and say that this is okay? Who doesn't fucking step up, Tony Khan, and check this asshole's ego at the fucking door? Tired of looking at his stupid blonde dyed hair, his rip-off ass gimmick, his dumb ass neck tattoo, and having to sit through these incessantly lame ass Hunter style Devil J mid card piece of crap promos, all just to get to the eventual fucking point of that he's got a match with the go go at double or nothing. Like, this asshole always has to go out there and try and make himself a bigger deal. Like, I'm not saying, but I'm saying, this had some Memphis mid card elements to it. This was really bad. If you praise this promo, I think you're a clown. 
This promo absolutely deserves, deserves to be shit on and frankly deserves to be shit on a lot more than it seemed to be getting over the past couple of days. Oh, but wait, there's more. The Tag Team Championship match featuring the SCU and the Young Bucks was just buried in the middle of the damn show. This is a match for one of your fucking titles. You just had the IWGP, what was it, US Championship defended at one of the premium slots, like in the opening segment, you buried your actual own belts in the middle of the damn show like it's not even in a featured segment? Who fucking does this? Like, this is basic television 101. This is dumb. And of course, a match like this that doesn't have a ton of build-up to it, you just kind of manufactured it, of course, it's got some ridiculously unnecessary, uncalled for stipulation like if SCU loses, they have to disband. And of course, a match without much build or much reason for happening just has to have these guys juice. And you got Christopher Daniels sitting there cutting himself for the world of fucking sea and there's a razor blade and the goddamn mat. And it's a typical type of fuck stick match from the Bucks of Suck. What the hell else would you expect? But even then, it's not nearly as bad as the abortion that Cody laid on everybody in the previous segment. Like, that's how bad that promo was. That as much as this typical Bucks of Suck fuck shit should have bothered me, it didn't bother me as much as it usually would because Cody took all the heat off of him because he was the absolute worst this week. And of course, you put this big stipulation out there after having the juice when you didn't need the juice here because the story didn't call for it. Then, of course, the Bucks win, blah, 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 whatever. And then we don't even bother to do any real follow-up to the fact, hey, these guys and Kaz and Daniels have been together in years with for years as a tag team with different companies all throughout the country, all throughout the world. And now they're broken up. They're no more. And you don't fucking follow up. Like it's one thing to set this up when you don't really need to. But if you're going to go there, then go there. The storytelling is everything, not the damn matches and moves. And it gets worse. This match wasn't a featured segment on the show, but what was? Pack versus Orange Cassidy, number one contenders match. So these are two options that you have to face Kenny Omega at double or nothing. That's what you're telling me. Pack, I get. But Orange Cassidy? That's the best you can do? And then... To make it even worse... All of this... Just to have Omega interfere and just to have it end up being a triple threat? Like, think about this. Like I said, Pac is one thing. And maybe you're throwing Orange Cassidy in here because you want him to do the job so Pac doesn't have to do the job. All blah, 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 blah. But of all the options you've got, this is the best you could come up with? What the fuck is making the de Well, we know who's making the decisions here. What the hell is wrong with them? And I saw a lot of people praising this pinnacle celebration segment where the inner circle interfered. Why? This was stupid second rate in Bush League. First, the fucking camera crew couldn't avoid showing Chris Jericho. It's like you had one job to do. Don't spoil the fucking surprise. And you immediately, as soon as you showed the fucking vehicle inner circle is in, we can see Chris Jericho in the background, surprise is fucking ruined. Never mind the fact you can question the thing of, well, he was just thrown to his fucking death a week before and the, at the end of the blood and guts match off the top of the cave into the cardboard of flames. But here he is right back, no selling it like it's no big fucking deal. Now you're just sitting there and apparently we're just going to do another match. Like, what was the whole damn point of blood and guts if it wasn't going to be the payoff or the blow-off here? Like, you just did it to pop a cheap rating, which if you did that, so be it, but you can't sit there and make this thing out to be blood and guts. Like, that should be the logical ending point. That should be the logical jump-off point. At least for it being group versus group. And instead, and instead, it was just another thing to continue the story along. Like, who the hell is making these decisions here? Like, I know I'm not the only one that was surprised on this. And furthermore, who the hell put Sammy Guevara in charge of spraying the alcohol or the water or whatever the hell? Just to have him sit there and take like a minute to get to the damn point of where he actually made contact with the liquid to the members of the pinnacle in the rig. Like, you don't plan this out ahead of time? You don't rehearse this ahead of time? It looks stupid. If you're going to rip off some Austin beer truck, angle milk truck type of shit, at least plan it out and work on it ahead of time. Rehearse it. 
make sure that these things aren't going to go off of the hitch because when you do it, it looks stupid. And that looks stupid. In a week full of stupid. That was about as stupid as anything. That wasn't the Cody Rhodes promo. The ladies of this week, of course, didn't get a ton of time. You got Jade Cargill with a promo. And I'm always happy to see Jade. Don't get me wrong. But it was short and to the point. Britt Baker had a couple of minutes of camera time. And I think she made the most of it. And then you had Thunder Rosa beating Jasmine Allure in a quick match. But that was it. You know, I want to be clear here. Yet another week where your stupid ass women's champion, Sheeta, is nowhere to be fucking seen. Can't wait to get that belt off of her. This company is so stupid for delaying that for so long. They did tournaments just to waste everybody's time. Like, what a, what a fucking joke and a half. But then at least we got to the main event. And I will agree. Like, the main event between Miro and Darby Allen for the TNT Championship entertained me. Yes, yes it did. Now, for those that said that Darby made him look, made Miro look like a million bucks, let's be clear. If he was going to make him look like a million bucks, this match would have went three minutes or less. So stop that shit. That did not make Miro look like a million bucks. At least what I could say it did was to sit there and say, as after almost a year of wasting Miro, now somebody apparently has come to their fucking senses and say, you know what, we don't have a lot of monsters in this company. Let's make one. And let's actually put the fucking a strap on them and see what we can do with them. Now, it took that long for somebody to come to their damn senses and realize, hey, maybe we shouldn't be wasting them with the Kip Sabian dumb crap. You know, Darby Allen, while he's not my flavor by any stretch of the imagination, it's a well-done, well-put-together character. Even though I think it's weird and it's kind of dumb. But the video packages they do, the promos that he does, like, they're good. They put Sting with him, like... Shit, at this point in time, I'd much rather see Darby Allen be the next opponent for Kenny Omega's putz ass at Double or Nothing for the AEW World Championship because I could guarantee you Darby Allen will make a much better world champion than Kenny Omega's putz ass ever could be. Tell me how I'm wrong. Tell me how I'm wrong. Because you know I'm not. But at least, like I said, with this main event, like, the match in and of itself was pretty good, although I would question the ending a little bit. Miro puts him in the submission, but it sure looked like his shoulders were down on the mat for at least a three count. How the hell doesn't Darby Allen retain? Blah, 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 blah. But even after that post-match, we can't just focus on Miro and make it about Miro. We gotta add this run out and this run in and blah, 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 and all this other bullshit. Like, the show was not that good this week. I'm really going to have to ask people to start having some damn standards, even if you love this company. Even if you love their product consistently. Like, not every week is going to be a home run. Not every week are they going to hit everything out of the damn park. If you want things to get better and improve, then you should hold their feet to the fire and take them to task when they put forth shitty efforts like they did this week. I was very happy to see, frankly, that the ratings were a little lower this week, especially compared to Blood and Guts from the week before. Because, because, they deserved it. They got the viewership number they deserved this week. It was not great. They got the performance in the key demo that they deserved because they didn't deserve a great number this week. This was a sloppy, bush league at times look and show. It was really bad. And been a year and a half plus now. Like, you're going to have those bad episodes, you're going to have those bad weeks, but, you know, for AEW, like, you're in a, you're in a good position here. Like, you could really make some headway and you could really make some noise and you could really be, make yourself into a future big time player in the wrestling landscape of this country and in the world. You can't keep consistently putting out efforts like this. Because this was trash this week, period. 